Hi, everybody. Dan Oman, Ashley Mayu. Taking a look at the DRF race of the day for Sunday, June the 16th. It's race number six at Santa Anita. Let's throw up the field for the grade three San Juan Capistrano. Ashley, this race used to be one of the highlights of the turf season. It was a grade one for 30 straight years. John Henry won this race in 1980, and now it's kind of an oddity. We don't really breed horses to go 14 furlongs anymore. But I wish we did. I love races that are like a mile and a half or a mile and three quarters. I think they're fun to watch. I think they're entertaining. I think, you know, it kind of really tests these horses. And I just, I've always been a fan of these sort of oddball races. And you mentioned it, not necessarily breeding for these sorts of races anymore. So a field of six, but we see the top three come back from last year's edition of the race. Planetario, I think he's been an interesting horse to watch where sometimes I think in terms of distance, he wants to go very long. I mean, wouldn't be surprised if he wanted to go two miles, but that's not the case. And uh, obviously he was very impressive last year in this race. And a couple of other horses, Rock and Brewery can't forget his big name. Uh, you know, you wonder if he's maybe lost a step a little bit, but they're going to regroup here and they send him out to California. It's competitive enough for a six horse field with several specialists. We'll throw up our time form U.S. pace projector. I don't see a ton of speed in here, but Bee Catcher has shown speed at longer distances in the past and is stretching out off a couple of middle distance efforts. So I can certainly see him up close to the pace, maybe order in law. I won't be surprised if Rim Protector is close as well. Yeah, I would think Ribbon Protector might be a little bit close to it with the inside draw and just looking at some of his races. And, um, you know, uh, this is obviously strategy once again, going a mile and three quarters. You don't want to be too far off of it necessarily. You don't want to go too quick early on. But Beat Catcher coming out of those one mile events, I would expect him on the lead. Rim Protector finished third at a big price in this race last year. He might be slightly better on the all-weather. He's won his last two starts up at Golden Gate, including this race, a high-level allowance going a mile. And there wasn't a ton of pace in this race. He utilized his tactical speed to get close, and he really digs down deep to just get the head bob. The fourth-place finisher came back to win with an 86 buyer, but that was when dangled for a $25,000 claiming option. Yeah, and he's one that, you know, sadly, I think he preferred the synthetic up at Golden Gate. You look at his best races, maybe not his best figures, but some of his best figures were over that surface. And, you know, they've regrouped. They've brought him to Santa Anita. And the one thing I will say is if you go down the page and you look at some of his races, um, I don't think they're bad. Even if he wasn't cracking the top three, he wasn't being beaten by that much in those races. And last year he was third in this event. He kind of was an even third, but he got a good position. And you wonder if the chances of that happening again are high, looking at who he's facing, a lot of similar rivals and just the fact that he draws towards the inside. It's been almost two years since the number two Rock Emperor won a race, but on his best day, he's been very capable. When he was trained by Chad Brown, he was a grade one winner on the East Coast, and maybe they shipped him out to California for some slimmer pickings. I didn't think he had a clean trip last time out on the Charlie Whittingham, kind of bottled up turning into the stretch and never really got a clear run. I know on his best day, he's good enough to win this race, and maybe he'll offer a little bit of value, but... He's Rock Emperor. He's disappointed me so many times in the past. Yeah, and you start to go down the page, and I think, you know, the connections maybe tried to regroup and send him out to California to find maybe a circuit that he belongs and to try to maybe pinpoint certain races that would fit well for him. And I'm just not sure what that is anymore. Um, now he's going to go back to a mile and three quarters. You go down the page. I mean, we see races at a mile and a half where he ran okay, but you're going back to October of 2022. So, I don't know what to make out of it. I would say in recent, by far, his best effort was up at Woodbine, going a mile and a quarter. We know the configuration on the turf course is different there with that mile and a half EP Taylor. But um, I don't know really what to do with him in here. And I'm very curious as we talk about this, you know, without the morning line and just trying to figure out where he'll be here. Yes, he has a big resume. You can see all the grade ones that he's participated in, and that's not the case. He's in a grade three event. But I just think there's some question marks surrounding him. So um, I don't know what to do with him. Awfully Naughty was one of the better longer distance turf horses in Southern California in 2023, won the San Luis Rey at a mile and a half, then ran a good second in the San Juan Capistrano. Maybe he's racing himself back into shape for this, his third start of the year. We're going to watch Awfully Naughty, several horses in this race. You see Rock Emperor in the teal down towards the inside, sort of compromised and in behind horses. Planetario, I think, might have gotten one of the better trips, sort of inside out, gets banged around a little bit with Awfully Naughty, and they're all all going to finish in a bunch. And I think, you know, you pointed out Awfully Naughty being one of those better distance types. I think that's the case. I think where I'm not sure what Emperor Rock Emperor's best game is right now, I think Awfully Naughty is a horse. The mile and three quarters, you know, anything from mile and a half to longer is probably where he wants to be. And you go down the page, 
Uh, you kind of look at his form, obviously, it was at peak form in 2023 before he had that little bit of a freshening. But I just think he wants to go longer. You look at the most recent race. Yes, he was flying late. Several others, though, were as well. And I think with this added distance, um, we saw how he performed last year. He had a lot of work to do. He ended up being second best. But I, I can speak to him and say added ground is what he'll like. Some class and distance concerns for the number four B catcher who was entered in the now winners of three life claimer last time out at Santa Anita and tried to make an early move into a slow pace before finishing second behind the odds on winner. He does have speed and maybe he could try to lull them to sleep on the front end, but I am very worried about this extra distance. Yeah, it's tough to ask any horse to maybe go mile three quarters on the front end. And, you know, I will say Dan Blacker's done a really good job with him. If you go down the, the past, the races that he was in were certainly tougher than the last couple of times we've seen him. So he knows this horse very well. Obviously, he's tried to go further and we cannot discredit him. At least he has a good effort at a mile and a half and a mile and three eighths at some point in his career. And, they, you know, they were a while back, but it was due to his front end fashion and the fact that he was able to set fractions to his liking. Now he's in a grade three event, going to try to do the same thing. Those were starter allowance competition. I don't know. I think if you like him here, maybe the thought process is he's going to stick around for a minor share. Uh, my biggest issue with him is not only that, but his Santa Anita turf record. I mean, he is 0 for 13. Order and Law is up next, and this guy likes distance. He won the Cougar to the two handicap at uh, Del Mar going a mile and a half on the dirt last year. So distance is an issue. He seems equally as good on turf as he is on the dirt. Claimed for $50,000 last time out. He has enough tactical speed where at least he can work out a trip. The question is his current form. Is he in good enough form right now to sort of take down the top two or three? Yeah, you mentioned that win on the dirt that was in the barn of Bob Hush Jr. And since then has been claimed twice now. And I don't know. I mean, his best race was arguably the race three back. Yes, it was a win. He got an 89 buyer on the turf course, but it was only going a mile and a quarter. I just have some reservations about his last two, not necessarily where he finished, but how he finished. I wanted to see more in those final stages. And he's certainly going to need that going longer. And, um, you know, it's interesting to note they are going to take blinkers off, which is wild in some sense. You have to go down the page. It's pretty far to October of 2021 to find no blinkers. Planetario we saw finishing a close third in the Whittingham going a mile and a quarter. But let's go back to his race at a mile and a half. Two starts back. This is the San Luis Ray. He takes on awfully naughty again. Planetario has the lead in the stretch. He's going to end up finishing second and miss the cut, who's really, really good right now. Uh, we're going to see awfully naughty finish okay. He might have needed this race off of the layoff. Planetario just runs really well at these longer distances. He won this race last year. And again, he's not like he's the kind of horse that is completely pace dependent. No, he's not. And I mentioned it earlier. He wants to go as long as they will allow him to. And I, you know, you can see that based on his races. You can see the way he trains. And he's probably got the most mile works out in California right now, I would say, Dan, as you look. I mean, this is kind of a normal for him. Every maybe five to six weeks, they do let him go a mile. And um, his just races, I feel like, at a mile and a quarter, it's just too short, right? A mile and a half to mile and three quarters is probably where he wants to be. Yes, he won this race last year, and these opportunities don't come up a ton to go this far, but he's a horse that you can see. Um, they're very strategic as to where they're placing him. It's all based on that distance. Before we take a look at our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel for the latest DRF videos. Let's take a look at our top pick for the San Juan Capistrano. We're both going to go with Planetario. He wants the distance. He might just simply be the classiest horse on paper. And it's a nice little rivalry we've got going with the six and the three. Yeah, these are to me the two to focus in on, and it all comes down to distance. We talked about Awfully Naughty wanting to go further than he's been going, and Planetario, I think, on paper is the horse to beat based on his resume at these sort of oddball races. And, you know, the other thing I would point out with him, Dan, is if you kind of look at his performance two back at the mile and a half, he was closer to it than he typically is. And he came up just a tad short in the end. He got caught by Miss the Cut, and luckily for him, he doesn't have to face that rival this weekend. 6312 for Ashley, 6325 for me. It's the San Juan Capistrano, a race with a very rich history. It's our Sunday DRF race of the day. Good luck.